Good morning. And Merry Christmas. It is Christmas. I'm wearing the prerequisite Christmas jumper. I've got my gingerbread socks on this morning. I was wearing my Father Christmas ones last night. I've got my Christmas mask as well. It's got the, the Holy Family there on the, on the mask. So we're all set. We're all set. Well, welcome this morning to Bigger Kirk. I'm Mike Fucella. I'm the minister here, for those of you who don't know me. This morning we don't have, well, we've got some live musicians with us, but uh, the, the usual music group is not here. They're here, there, and everywhere, visiting relatives as you do at this time of year. So we've had, got some pre-recorded music that uh, folks in our congregation have recorded, and we'll sing along with that. But Ailey and Greg will keep us right. And, uh, right? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> So we're in the midst of this pandemic. We're, we're still abiding by the regulations. Um, please leave out that door when you leave this morning. Um, we're not going to have an offering, but there is an offering plate at the door. So if you uh, feel like giving, there is a plate there for you to give your, your offering. So let's worship God. And we worship with our, our first carol, which is the carol, Come and join the celebration. Oh. <laughs> I hope you're getting this on the video. <laughs> Well done. We've got a fireman in the congregation. <laughs> I'm glad someone had a bottle of water. I, I'm glad you didn't use the hand sanitizer to try to put it out either. <laughs> so we can still celebrate because we still have a church. <laughs> Let's stand and, and sing together. Come and join the celebration. So you can see these candles down here. I thought the fire was down here. But uh, this is our Advent wreath. And you see that all the candles are lit because it is Christmas morning. We lit the middle candle, which is the Christ candle, last night at as close to midnight as we could get. But we, we pray now to recognize this Christ candle. Christ has come into the world. The light has come. Light of Christ, to awaken us this hour to the glory of your presence 
in our midst. Shine among us in such a way that the darkness without and the darkness within may be pushed back, such that we might truly see what is real. Lord God, help us by your light to recognize our sin for what it is. Enable us to behold the world as you created it to be, as you created us to be. Lord God, empower us to move from darkness to light, from sin to new life. May your light within us shine throughout this day as we worship you and in all the days to come. This we pray in the name of the word made flesh, the light which is the light of all people, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we go back to last night with our next carol, which is, it was on a starry night. Let's stand and sing together once more. Last night, we looked at the more unfamiliar story of Christmas that's found in John's Gospel. But this morning, I thought we would go back to the more familiar story that we find in Luke's Gospel. And I'd like us to read it together as we see the words on the screen from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 14. Let's read together. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, 
who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in claws and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. This is the gospel of Christ. And we're going to sing again the same song as the angels sang. Hark the herald angels sing. Let's stand and sing together. Please be seated. Let's pray as we turn to reflect on the significance of this day.
Lord, these events that we read about seem so strange to us. And yet they are familiar. We come every year to hear this story, to reflect on it. And every year there's something new that we can learn. Thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We pray that you would teach us now as we are in your presence. Pray that you would send your spirit to speak to each and every one of us. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I read an article recently entitled, Top Tips for a Successful Christmas. It's an article on the BBC website. And here are six of those top tips. We have the first screen up there. One, make sure you plan in advance. Two, get the tree right. Three, conquer the mighty Christmas dinner. Four, make your presents great and don't forget anyone. Five, avoid the family drama. And six, try not to stress. I wonder if by this standard you are going to have a successful Christmas this year or not. It's certainly a high bar that is set for us. And I wonder if by these standards you or I have in fact ever had a successful Christmas. I wonder too if by these standards that first Christmas could have been deemed successful. I wonder, too, if we might want to shoot for a significant Christmas instead of a successful one. Let's go through these tips and tease them out to maybe see what the difference between a successful and a significant Christmas might be for us. So here's the first one. Make sure you plan in advance. Well, this Christmas and, and let, can we get to the, there we go. Make sure you plan in advance. There's someone making a strategic plan. This Christmas and, and last Christmas, there has been much that has happened that we haven't been able to plan for. Some of us have had all our plans upended because of this coronavirus. I was on Facebook the other day, and a minister posted that he had, he had uh, pre-booked a job lot of oranges for Christingle, <laughs> and they had to cancel their Christingle service, of course, and he was left with all these oranges. I've had a chat with several people as, as I've been preparing for this, this service this morning uh, about Christmases that they have experienced in the past. And one of the things that stands out in people's stories about their Christmases of the past is that the most significant Christmases for most of us are ones that we had not planned for. <laughs> There have been things that have happened that we haven't been able to plan for. Significantly, one friend shared with me that one year their neighbor's house had a fire on Christmas Day. <laughs> We've had one here this morning. And so unplanned beforehand, the two families got together and they shared food and they shared fun and they shared presents. It brought them closer as, as neighbors and it was all because nothing was planned. On that first Christmas when Jesus was born, there was a plan, a plan that God had been hatching for a long time throughout Advent. We've been looking at some of the prophecies that we have heard about uh, Jesus coming that were made 700 years beforehand. But the thing about God's plans is that they don't always go according to the way that we humans think that they should. 
And on that first Christmas, there were lots of unplanned twists and turns in the story for all the players involved. Joseph and Mary didn't plan for their first child to be born in Bethlehem. He was born there because of the census. They didn't plan for him to be born in a stable, but there was no room for them elsewhere. They didn't plan for the shepherds to show up unannounced on Christmas night. But in the end, unplanned as it was, it turned out all right. And it was, we can safely say, the best Christmas ever. One, certainly, that has been remembered for over 2,000 years. The second tip is to get the tree right. And the subtitle of this tip is, How to Decorate a Tree Like a Professional. The advice is to design your decorations around a theme. Some of the themes suggested by the style gurus at John Lewis and their magazines are Snow Mountain. Snow Mountain. Another one is Blush Coast. That last one sounds like some nudist beach in Australia. Certainly not an all-age Christmas. When I think of this tip, I remember some of our best Christmases in Thailand when we had no tree at all. I also think about the decorations that we have on our tree every year these days. And I've brought a couple along. That one is made by Jane's sister, who is a potter. In her early days, she was making Christmas decorations for everyone. So that's significant for us. This one was handcrafted by folks at McCain Rehabilitation Center in, in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Those are folks who are recovering from leprosy, and that's significant too. So whenever we look at our decorations, it brings back memories. There are ones that people have given us, ones children have made, ones from different places that we have lived over the years. And these are all a, a motley collection. They certainly don't fit one of the themes that the style gurus would recommend that we use. That, that first Christmas, there is no mention of a tree, you might be surprised, at all. And there was very little, if any, decoration. And even though in most nativity plays, the, the wise men are bedazzled and bling in the Gospels, there is really no mention of them wearing anything special at all. They were probably wearing jeans and T-shirts. There were no Christmas trees and not a lot of decoration at that first Christmas. But it was shot through with the theme of God's love that lit both the earth and the skies with his glory. Number three, conquer the mighty Christmas dinner. Jamie Oliver advises, chuff your potatoes and rest your breasts. <laughs> Again, some of the best Christmases in the Fuchella family have been ones where we had no turkey, no breast to rest. I remember Christmases on the border between Thailand and Burma that we shared with, with friends who had come from all over the world to work in the refugee camp there. And they brought with them their traditions of Christmas. And the food was amazing, from Boeuf Bourguignon from France to Leche de Leque from Argentina to tea leaf salad from Burma. That first Christmas in Bethlehem, there is no mention of food. But did you know that the name Bethlehem means house of bread? Jesus will later say that he is the bread from heaven. He is the bread from heaven come down 
to feed all of humankind. That's the best food we could ever get at Christmas. And that's the food that God provides us all in abundance, no matter who you are or where you live. You can't spoil this food that God gives you by leaving it in the oven too long or not giving, getting the gravy right. Fourthly, make your presence great and don't forget anyone. In 1914, the first year of World War I, there was a Christmas truce between the trenches. I don't know if you've seen that advert on the television. The troops on both sides of the conflict came out to greet one another, play football, and they shared food. They also exchanged presents, presents that were wrapped in whatever, maybe a, a bit of cloth. These presents were German chocolate from one side, plum pudding from the other, and cigarettes all around. These were ordinary things for the troops, but by giving these gifts, it made it a significant Christmas. For these gifts signified that even though nations might be in conflict with one another, the people fighting were still human beings. And at Christmas, even when conflicts are raging, we are offered hope that one day, because of that baby born in the manger, true and lasting peace will reign on earth. That first Christmas, there was one gift that was perfect for everyone. And it's still the best gift anyone and everyone can receive. It's the gift of the life of God's own Son, Jesus Christ, given as the Savior for all of us. No one who is willing to trust in Jesus will ever be forgotten on this Christmas day. Number five. Avoid the family drama. The problem with this tip is that unless you cut off ties with the family, there is often no way of avoiding family dramas at this time of year. So maybe a better way of dealing with the situation is to say, right, this year, we're going to find time to sort things out. Right, this year we are going to find reconciliation as far as it's up to you. We're going to do that even if it turns out to be messy and it ends in tears all around. And we can dedicate ourselves to to that right now and pray that it will be so. Now, certainly there was a lot of family drama at that first Christmas. I imagine that there was not just a little tension between Mary and Joseph when she told him that she was pregnant. But because of God's intervention, and because Joseph was open to what God communicated to him in that dream, and because Mary was the faithful person that she was, things worked out, and they can work out for us in all our family dramas, too. The final tip, try not to stress. This one's for me. Each of the last two years, days after Christmas, I have had a major health crisis. I hope that isn't starting to be a trend for me. I do like the tip from the article, and it goes like this. There's all sorts of Christmases. Don't feel like you have to have the Christmas you see on Instagram. If you're just sitting there in your PJs watching TV, 
that's okay too. Cut yourself a bit of slack this Christmas. Yes, cut yourself a lot of slack at all times of year, but especially at Christmas. Someone recently shared with me that you can look at your life in one of two ways. And both of these ways are given to us by those great theologians named John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Life can be lived either by the mantra, we can work it out, or by saying, help, I need somebody. Either we believe that we can work it out, try to hold everything together ourselves, try as hard as we can to make life and Christmas a success, following all those tips and ticking all the boxes. But in my experience, that doesn't get us very far. I need others. I need my family. I need to work together with others as a team. And I absolutely need God's help. At this time of year, we are reminded that the only successful way of tackling life and Christmas is that second way that the Beatles give us for us to say, help, I need somebody. Help, Lord, I need you to be my savior. I trust in you. That indeed is why God came to us in Jesus at Christmas. May you be able to say that this Christmas. May you be able to say, help, I need you, God, this Christmas. By doing that, whether your Christmas is a success or not, it will certainly be a significant one. May your Christmas be a significant one this year as you come to grips with the love of God for you, that love of God that brought you a Savior so long ago and still brings it to you today. Amen. And may God bless to us this reflection on this Christmas day. And we sing together the carol, Joy to the World. Let's stand and sing. be seated and Jane's going to come and bring us our prayers this Christmas morning
Let us pray. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, could you respond, hear our prayer. Loving God, we praise you for all we have to rejoice in at Christmas. This special reminder year by year of your coming to us in Christ. Come to us now and help us to keep you at the centre of our celebrations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to our loved ones, our families, our friends, all those we hold dear and whom we shall share with or think of over these coming days. Help us as we celebrate and make merry to think also of Christ and through drawing closer to him to grow closer together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to those in special need, the poor, the sick, the lonely and sad, the homeless, the helpless, the oppressed and persecuted, all those for whom life is hard and the future seems bleak. We pray particularly today, Lord, for those in the Philippines struggling with the after effects of the storms that they've had this week that have destroyed homes, killed people, and injured many. Reach out to them in love and give them somehow something to celebrate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, may the light of Christ break into the lives of people everywhere, bringing your joy, your peace, your hope and your love a song of praise on their lips and celebration in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to them, come to us, come to all, and send us on our way rejoicing in the gospel and praising you for the wonder of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we sing our final carol, O come all ye faithful. Let's stand and sing.
Let's receive God's blessing. May the joy of the shepherds, the wonders of Mary, the worship of the wise men, and the love of God who gave us his only begotten Son be ours this Christmas and always. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and remain with us all evermore. Amen. Merry Christmas.